Hello, my name is Dr. Samuel Pegram. I'm a rheumatologist and I would like to welcome you to the living room. That's R-H-E-U-M, as in rheumatology, a place where we discuss rheumatologic issues always from the patient's perspective. Today, we are going to talk about osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is the most common form of arthritis in the world. At any given time, 27 million to 32 million Americans have osteoarthritis. It is a disease that is also called degenerative joint disease or the arthritis of aging. It is also called the arthritis of wear and tear in time. It is in fact a degenerative process. It is a disease of the cartilage. The cartilage is the protective material that forms around the ends of the bones that make up the joint capsule. It is quite tough. In fact, it takes about 50 years for the cartilage to begin to wither away. But as it does, the bones become exposed and the joint becomes weaker and weaker and more vulnerable. The body's natural mechanism is as the cartilage withers away, the body lays more bone around the joint surface. That causes those nodules that you and I see at the ends of our fingers as we grow older. It has a preference for certain joints. It particularly involves the joints closest to the fingernail, the next row of joints closest to that, and also the base of the thumb. It also tends to involve weight-bearing structures like the spine, the hips, and the knees. It is a disease that has no respect for ethnicity or gender. All ethnic groups suffer from osteoarthritis. Asian Americans have it slightly less often than other ethnic groups, but all ethnic groups suffer from osteoarthritis. Women and men have osteoarthritis equally till about the age of 55. Then women begin to outnumber men. About 13% of women have osteoarthritis after the age of 55 and about 10% of men. It is a disease primarily of aging. Most people develop their first symptoms around the age of 50 or beyond. Younger people can have osteoarthritis, but generally when there is some type of trauma to the joint, where there is already a direct insult to the cartilage that puts these patients at a disadvantage and thus they will develop osteoarthritis earlier in life. It may have some genetic component because we do know that there are certain families that may have osteoarthritis earlier in life in their 30s or 40s but that is generally not the case. Osteoarthritis is slow to progress, fortunately. That's why most people tolerate osteoarthritis reasonably well. It is called the non-crippling form of arthritis, although the structural deformities of osteoarthritis at times can be quite severe. The problem with osteoarthritis is that it is progressive, slowly, but nonetheless progressive. And unfortunately, we don't have medicines to prevent the progression. Treatment in osteoarthritis is primarily symptomatic. But with appropriate modes of therapy, the disease can generally be very well controlled. Certain risk factors for the disease are obviously age, gender, as we mentioned, women have the disease somewhat more frequently than men, particularly later in life, and then stress loads. The most common stress load, unfortunately, in our country is weight gain. Increasing weight puts additional stress on the cartilage. And as the cartilage is already suffering from loss over time, weight only adds to that particular condition. Stressful types of activities such as athletics, where there's a lot of stress load against joints breaking down cartilage earlier in life is also a risk factor, as is uh, activities such as employment where patients must lift heavy objects or press against resistance. That also increases the incidence of osteoarthritis. There also seems to be some metabolic uh, association with worsening of osteoarthritis because we know patients who are overweight not only develop increasing osteoarthritis in weight-bearing joints, but also in their hands. 
there is a slight inflammatory component within the joint capsule in patients who have osteoarthritis, although it is not felt to be in an inflammatory condition. But that may provide targets for future therapy since there is some degree of inflammation, again, within the joint capsule. Therapy is still a dilemma. And it is one that we will discuss in greater detail at the next time we get together here in the living room. We'll see you real soon.